Hi everyone, today I'm joined with Isaiah Cox, CEO of Wheel Tug. Thank you for joining me today, Isaiah. My pleasure. So perhaps if you could start by introducing a bit about yourself and background on the company for anyone who doesn't already know. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. So if I may, the Wheel Tug system is best shown rather than described. And it's shown as follows. Here you see an aircraft doing something that airplanes today do not do. You see that it's able to turn backward on itself without using a pushback tug. You can see the engines are covered. And what our technology actually is, is an onboard in wheel, you can see it up in the top left corner there, electric motor that drives the aircraft from power driven by the APU and allows us to do a number of different things. It allows us, for example, to go from doors closed to taxi forward in one minute or less every flight, as opposed to the five or 20 minutes it can take today. It allows us to pirouette the aircraft at the gate in order to reduce congestion in the taxiway instead of backing up to block the way for other airports. And it allows us, as you can see here, to taxi the aircraft even forward without using the jet engines themselves. Put that together and you have a benefit of time, you have a benefit of fuel, emissions, pollution, you eliminate the safety risk of the jet blast and the engine ingestion, and you ultimately make your aircraft fantastically more efficient and competitive. Fantastic, thank you. So picking up on sustainability, in your opinion, do you think the industry is where it needs to be to meet net zero by 2050 targets? And if not, what needs to change? I think everybody agrees that um, we're not where we need to be in order to achieve targets in the future. Uh, I think that's that's pretty straightforward. The challenge is that what we're looking for is a moonshot. We're looking for something like hydrogen or some other um, some other magic wand. And moonshots are hard to produce, especially in a mature industry like aerospace, which is an extremely mature industry. Uh, so our aim and our belief is that the industry needs to continue to make every step it can. The small steps matter, uh, like better aerodynamics where they're possible, better engines where they're possible. Um, anywhere, any opportunity you have to keep the engines off on the ground is a win because it does get you in that direction. And one of the things that has to be re remembered is that aircraft that are being built today are likely to still be flying in 2040 or certain to be 20 flying in 2040 and still likely to be flying in 2050. So um, achieving net zero cannot just be about a, a brand new aircraft because you're not going to retire a fleet of 30,000 or 25,000 airplanes overnight. Uh, those aircraft are going to fly out their economic life one way or another. And the, the airplanes being built now um, are going to be part of the 2050 equation. And certainly the airplanes being built in 2030 are going to be part of the 2050 equation. So anything you can do to improve the current generation of aircraft is a win. Fantastic. Thank you. And sticking along this sort of sustainability theme, the automation of airport processes, how do you see that as being connected to sustainability goals and how are we seeing this transform airport operations? So I think that that's a huge area of, of growth possibilities. So we're seeing a number of things all happening at the same time, but not happening fast enough. And I'll give one example. Um, automated gates. There is no reason why somebody should be standing there manipulating a joystick, bumping into the aircraft when, you know, we have almost self-driving cars. We certainly can have automated gates where the computer drives the jet bridge into the airplane, is ready um, when the aircraft comes in, because time is, is what it's about. If you can reuse, if you can make your aircraft more efficient by getting more flights out of it per day, more operations per day, more seat miles per day per aircraft, that is also a way of becoming more sustainable. It's when you have an airplane that isn't flying that you have an unsustainable model. So the automation at on the ground is a key part of this because a lot of what we wait for is, oh, wait for the gate to come in. That can be several minutes. So if you have an automated gates, and I know that, that uh, some airports, uh, um, Schiphol, for example, in Amsterdam are working on this, um, but automated gates should become universal in this industry because it will save time. Similarly, automated ground vehicles. The While self-driving cars uh, may or may not happen, uh, self-driving vehicles at airports, I think, are a certainty because it's a much simpler um, model. It's a much simpler operating environment than the open road. And the software seems to be able to handle it. And anytime you can remove people 
um, you can make automation safer, faster, more efficient, more sustainable. And that that is that's a real thing. I mean, if if you can, and also having it happen, for example, with camera systems, you're getting both cameras on aircraft. Wheeltuck provides those, but so do a number of different companies providing cameras at the gate of every airport. And those cameras feed into AI. That AI helps keep everybody informed about what's going on. And this reduces accidents. It reduces um, uh, the, the chances of things going wrong, people being hurt. That's that's all very, very good and should be accelerated as much as reasonably can be. It is, it is absolutely in the interest of the industry to remove um, untrained humans from the loop wherever possible. Okay, great. And um, I'm interested in what you said there to do with it being when when sort of planes are on the ground, that's when they're really becoming um, a detriment to the sustainability things. So do you see it as optimization across the board as being a really important factor in reaching sustainability goals? So here's the thing. All the jet aircraft in the world basically fly at the same speed. And they basically fly at an optimized speed for the most amount of miles for, for fuel burn. So there, it's already optimized, given the engines and aircraft and everything else we have. Um, you're not going to get much advantage in the future um, in in that. But on the ground, the operations are widely different, and they're widely unoptimized. You have, for example, at LaGuardia Airport, it sometimes requires five or six people to push back an aircraft. In Amsterdam, they do it with only one person pushing back the airplane. So you have you have this wide distribution, and and some aircraft spend. 60 minutes on the ground, touchdown to takeoff. United, American, Delta spend 90 to 110 minutes from touchdown to takeoff. If you're not using your assets efficiently, then you can't use them sustainably. It means you basically need more crews, more aircraft, more engines to fly the same number of passengers. If you can make the ground faster, then you make the entire flight faster and you increase the efficiency of everything. And so the the you know it's there's a real cost to how much does an airplane cost? How much does an airplane cost to maintain, to fly and everything else? If you can get more flights, more seat miles per aircraft, you're adding sustainability. Fantastic. And I guess what we've been seeing a little bit is with staff shortages with the return to travel and the rate that we have returned to travel, things aren't necessarily running as smoothly on the ground as they can when they're um at their at their best. So automation in that sense as well could really lend a hand in uh, bridging that gap. So that's an excellent question. I just want to show a couple of things that happened in the last eight or 10 months. Here's a collision of a jet bridge that ran into a jet engine, right? This would have been avoided if you had had an automated system properly designed. We have a lot of examples of wingtips and winglets running into each other, of an A350 that ran into a light pole. That's a very expensive little accident. You have the example further of, of, a, of a ground tug that uh, that got a little out of control driving an airplane here at LaGuardia last August. The airplane ends up on top of the tug, on top of the driver there, as you can see. And the driver lived, but the aircraft was out of service for several months while they had to repair it. These kinds of things can happen with just momentary um, infusion. And the ground operations are consequently a big mess. And you can see the aircraft coming here. It actually ends up riding on top of the tug lifting the nose wheel off the ground it's it's uh it's it's hideous and totally avoidable similarly we have winglets that uh, or wing tips that can cut the tail off an airplane these sorts of things also happen of course and other numerous collisions of aircraft wings running into other bits of aircraft wings so these sorts of problems and here's a pushback um last august um senegal in in barcelona hitting a catering truck as you can see so these kinds of collisions are avoidable and they need to be avoided, but we're still moving aircraft the way we were in 1960. And, and it's time to update that model, give the pilots um, camera feed so they can see and give them a reverse gear so they can actually drive backward without relying on ground crew who may or may not actually do a very good job of looking out for the aircraft. Fantastic, that's great. Thank you for for sharing those sort of visual aids as well. It's always interesting to see it like that. So finally now, what future trends do you um, envision impacting airport operations the most in the next few years? So ADSB is being reported now on increasing numbers of ground vehicles, which means that you can track 
and everybody can track where a vehicle is going. This is this is um, a live view of Schiphol Airport. And you'll see that in addition to the yellows, which are live aircraft reporting ADSB, there are also ground vehicles um, running around the airport. This one is uh, not listed, but it is a, a reporting ADSB transponder. Um, and if you zip around the airport, I, I chose Schiphol for a reason, and it may be the wrong reason. Uh, there tend to be a number of little gray guys running around. As that adds, as we see more and more ground vehicles reporting their their locations, then you're able, basically, by putting an ADSB on everything on the ground, you're able to greatly clean up the ground environment. Um, and uh, for some reason, they're not available on this particular. But you can you can look on FR24 yourselves. It's growing around the world to add ADSB um, reporters on the ground. And as that happens, then the chaos that sometimes seems to dominate on the ground will greatly clean up. Um, as long as you can, you know, you track every ground vehicle and and you have to stay on top of FOD. But between the cameras, the AI being applied to the camera feeds, the um, cameras, the wheel tugs adding to the aircraft themselves, as well as the um, the various radar systems, we're going to end up with a much more efficient and and straightforward ramp operation. And I think that's that's a great advantage for the industry. Okay, wonderful. So so that was. One quite detailed example. Can you think of any others that uh, you foresee having a big impact on airport operations? So the problem is, is that airports are huge infrastructure and they take a long time to change. We we are seeing a, a growth in pop-ups where, for example, instead of driving a fuel truck out to the airplane, you have a pop-up module that, that comes up to, to feed fuel to the airplane. The problem with the fixed installation solutions is that they end up rendering the gate much less flexible uh, for different kinds of aircraft types. And so there's there's a tension, in my opinion, between um, between making the perfect airport, which will have to be perfect for decades and decades to come, or um, having a more flexible vehicle um, uh, applied airport. Understand that the same number of vehicles today service an airplane as serviced an aircraft in 1958. It hasn't changed. The industry has not grown. One of the things that Wheeltug will bring is um, is the use of our two door operation because the two door operation allows you to drive the aircraft in and turn sideways and you can see that if you were to do this then your standard installed pop ups don't solve the problem. On the other hand, what you have by turning the aircraft sideways parallel to the terminal is the opportunity to connect the aircraft to the terminal with two jet bridges, one in the front and one in the back. Now this is the key problem that you have with aviation today. A subway car, for example, I'm going to pause. A subway car, for example, has three or four doors, every single car. So you don't spend all day queuing to get on and off a subway car or a train car. You have a front and a rear door. You get on, you get off. It takes a minute or two. But a narrow body aircraft, you can spend half an hour getting on and half an hour getting off, especially if you're unfortunate enough to sit in the back of the airplane. It can easily spend that. Southwest Airlines today spends 55 minutes at the gate every single flight getting people off, cleaning the airplane, getting people on. So the solution in part with people is to, is to be able to turn the aircraft sideways and service it with a jet bridge in the front and a jet bridge in the back. That's great. But what you also get to do is eliminate ground vehicles. How do we do that? Today, you need a freshwater and a wastewater service truck in the back of the airplane. But if you had a rear jet bridge, you could put those umbilical, basically pipes, right, with, with motors, um, on the jet bridge, and then you can get rid of two ground vehicles. Even bigger, if you do kind of a zip around um, conveyor belt, then you can unload all the bags from the aircraft on a conveyor belt from the rear jet bridge, eliminating the entire need for the baggage train. And that's a huge cost and hassle. It's a, it's a, it's a sustainability problem. It's a manpower problem. Um, it's touch time problem, right? Today, a, a, a bag goes in modern airports all the way up to the gate where it's loaded on a truck right about here, driven out on the train to the airplane right about here, and then unloaded. So you have extra touch time. But if you had a conveyor belt connected to the terminal's automated system, then you would have the bag go all the way into the airplane belly and be, be sit, finally situated by one person in the air or two in the aircraft belly. You get rid of all of those vehicles. So the ability to remove ground vehicles is going to be a big win. The ability to drive sideways is a big win. But one of the things that's really important to be aware of is that this is actually an old idea. 
This was done. Look at these beautiful aircraft, a jet bridge in the front and a jet bridge in the back. And all we're doing is suggesting that we go back to that solution and add the wastewater, freshwater, and baggage attachments to make it possible to further reduce the need for ground crew. Fantastic. Well, thank you for elaborating on that. And thank you for joining me today, Isaiah. It was lovely to meet you. My pleasure. Likewise.